We're going moisturizer shopping, so hop in. All right, listen, good. well, let me give you some eye contact. Listen, guys, same spiel when it came to my cleanser video, which if you haven't checked out, make sure you check that out, you know, after you watch this one. <laughs> but I'm about to go into the store and I'm just gonna give you a, like a quick overview here because I don't know how freely I'm gonna be able to talk in there. So when it comes to picking out a moisturizer, it's kind of similar to the tips I gave you in my cleanser video. So the first thing you want to uh, determine is your skin type because your skin type is definitely going to determine the type of moisturizer that you're going to need. Is your skin oily? Is it dry? Is it more balanced where it's not really dry and it's not really oily? Is it dry in some spots and oily in others? So that's something that you definitely want to figure out when it comes to your skin type. Now, sometimes you might be like, well, how do I figure out what my skin type is? I'm gonna leave some information in the description box so you can check it out. Now listen, this hair is a lot. <laughs> Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're shopping for a moisturizer is the climate where you live and if that place has different seasons. So for instance, if you live someplace tropical the type of moisturizer that you're gonna need is gonna be probably very different from someone who lives in a very cold and dry climate even if you and that person have similar skin types because weather definitely has an effect on your skin now another thing if you're someplace that has different seasons you know i always love to tell you that i'm from new york city um but here in this region uh we get four seasons so the moisturizer that i use in the summertime is nine times out of ten gonna be totally different from what I would use in the winter sometimes there are formulations that work year-round for me um, but typically you're gonna want to also keep in mind the season when it comes to your moisturizer okay now hopefully this hair doesn't look like a lot <laughs> this is my first time wearing this uh, this 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 wig and um, it's got a side part, and I don't know if I've like inverted the part too much, but we, we just gonna rock with it because it's about the skincare information, not about what, it's about what's in my head, not what's on it, okay? So another thing you wanna take into consideration are what are your current skin issues? Are you dealing with acne? Are you dealing with hyperpigmentation? Are you dealing with, you know, maybe dryness uh, of your skin or maybe your skin has changed after having a baby or, you know, there could be a myriad of things that are going on with your skin at the present moment. Skincare needs typically change, you know, as we go through seasons of life. Uh, so those are things that you want to keep in mind as well when you're picking out a moisturizer. Now, I just wanted to briefly touch upon hydration versus moisturization. <laughs> That's a lot of Asians. So when you hydrate your skin, you're giving it, you're, you're infusing. It's almost like you're giving your skin a drink of water and it's like... <sighs> Now, when you moisturize, basically what you're doing is you are putting a seal, you are putting a hat, you are putting the kibosh. Is that the right word I wanna use here? But anyway, you are sealing that hydration in, you are protecting the skin when you moisturize, and that keeps the hydration in. So that's the difference between hydrating and moisturizing. So there are products out there that address hydration and then there are products out there that address moisturization. Um, and then there's some products that you can get. Like I feel like a lot of the water creams, not all of them, because some of them I feel like you still might need something on top depending on your skin type if you're feeling a little drier. Um, but a, a lot of the water creams tend to address hydration and moisturization, you know, all up in one. That said, Let's take a look at some of the things that are in Ulta. Um, moisturizer is something I don't feel you need to spend a lot of money on. I, like, I feel like a lot of times we equate the price with efficacy. Like, you know, yes, you want to invest in your skincare routine, but investing doesn't mean that you have to pay big bucks. Investing can simply mean, you know, making sure that you are following your routine properly, you know, day and night, right? So you don't have to spend a lot of money on moisturizers i find that a lot of the like uh, mastige um brands like l'oreal olay um la roche posay a lot of these brands have really excellent moisturizers that aren't going to cost you a lot of money um that's what i like to do but if you want to spend money on a moisturizer that's fine as long as you can afford it, it's not hurting you it's not hurting anybody else it's perfectly fine, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on a moisturizer. That said, <laughs> and I feel like we got a couple people watching the video as I'm filming it, you know what I mean? 
let's get inside and shop for moisturizers. Okay, we're, we, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. I just forgot something I needed to tell you. Dr. Alexa Stevens has an amazing video on vitamin F and what you need to look for in a moisturizer if you have hyperpigmentation. I highly suggest you check that out because there's some really great information. So I'll link it below, I'll link it above, below, all up and through. Just go watch it, it's important, let's go. Quick note about pricing. I do find that Ulta, their drugstore items can be <laughs> more expensive than what you would see at other drugstore locations. So the prices that you're gonna see are um, the lower prices that I found when I was linking these. Um, I like Ulta though, because they have a mix of the drugstore and the department store brands, but definitely you can probably get a better deal on the drugstore stuff. So this one's pretty great for a number of skin types. It's particularly great if you have sensitive skin. Remember sensitive skin is a condition, not a skin type. But like if you, even if you're on a prescription like a tretinoin or you want a little ham in your routine and you're kind of irritated, this is something that's nice to use. Or if you just have sensitive skin and looking for something that doesn't have a bunch of potential irritation in it. I actually enjoyed this for oily skin. It has the sunscreen and the moisturizer all rolled into one so you can knock two steps out at once. Um, I like this in the summertime. It's probably a little bit too oil absorbing for me when it gets colder out but pretty nice for the summer. If you're looking for a lightweight moisturizer with SPF that you know still has like some really great ingredients in it, I like the Olay Whips line. Um, now you guys know I've worked with Olay a lot in the past and even in the present, I was just on Dr. Oz. Did you see me? Did you see me? I haven't tried the Total Effects because that's geared more towards drier skin. So I usually stay within the Regenerous line, which you know has our fave niacinamide, AKA vitamin B3. These are lightweight. They have an SPF 25 one and then the SPF 40 I've had, I have actually tried in the Regenerous Whips. But see if you can get your Olay from Walmart because I do find it's like almost $10 cheaper sometimes on at walmart.com versus the prices they have at Ulta, unless Ulta's having a sale or something, but just, just shop around for pricing. So I haven't tried this, so I can't vouch for the cast. Um, but I remember in a previous mineral sunscreen video where someone said that they had very dry skin. Um, some of the mineral sunscreens I've tried have been, I think would be nice for dry skin, but check this one out. Um, and if anyone has tried it, let me know in the comments. I really love this for my body during the winter. Probably not something that I would want to use during the summer, but if you have really dry eczema prone skin, you might want to look into this. So I have a video where I tried a couple of CeraVe products and I'm trying to remember if I've tried any of the moisturizers, I can't recall. But from what I hear from people, people tend to like their cleansers more than the moisturizers, unless it's like the moisturizing lotion, people like that. And people like, of course, the um, healing ointment. But leave a comment below. Are you a fan of CeraVe moisturizers for your face? I tried this last year and liked it. I feel like Neutrogena, Rock, and Olay make retinols that I personally like from the drugstore. So gel creams, gel moisturizers, bouncy moisturizers. They have many different names, but these are actually one of my favorite textures in skincare. Um, I like these type of moisturizers because as someone with oily skin, they tend to be really hydrating without being heavy. Um, but just make sure that you check the packaging because some of them, you can have a gel cream that's for dry skin and then you can have some that are for oily skin. But that texture, I really love it. One thing I will say though, is that sometimes you might want to put something on top of a gel cream, especially if you're drier, um, or maybe it's a time of the year where you kind of feel a little bit drier, you might need to put a creamy moisturizer on top or maybe even a facial oil. Because I do find sometimes like, you know, when you wear hyaluronic acid and maybe the air is dry and it kind of just like sucks all the moisture from your skin. Um, same thing can kind of happen with a gel cream, so just be mindful. So out of what I just showed, I have tried the Peter Thomas Roth, the Neutrogena, and the Murad water creams. I love them all. They will be linked below as well as everything else that you see in this video. I feel like, look, I need an easy way to shop for a moisturizer or at least narrow down the choices. Brands make it relatively easy because on the packaging, then the very front, it'll tell you which skin type it's for and a couple of benefits of the product. Now, of course, you're not just gonna stop there because sometimes a brand shot G you with the marketing in the front. If you have a list of like known irritants, make sure you scan the ingredients in the back for it. Um, if you're someone where you have particularly sensitive skin and you're not quite sure what those are, you know, definitely talk to your doctor about maybe doing an allergy test. Um, but typically look for things that are fragrance free, 
um, free of allergens. Those are things. It, it's not going to be the, <laughs> the ultimate fix, but at least it will kind of narrow things down for you. So actives in moisturizer, do you need it? I mean, it's going to depend. First of all, you don't want to overdo it with the active. So if you have one that's already in other parts of your routine, maybe in your serum, you know, you don't want to overdo it. So be careful of that. And a few more personal faves. So I have liked this Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier for my oily skin in the summertime. Um, it's really good at controlling the oil. They had a previous version of this, but it looks like they reformulated it and, um, made it with a higher SPF. It's a little, just a little teeny bit heavier than the previous um, version, uh, but still good for controlling oil, uh, for my oily skin at least. Um, I also like the anti-aging moisturizer. Um, that's something that I would use like, you know, moderate weather, maybe a spring, fall, maybe sometimes in the winter. And then I also really like their retinol uh, night cream. And there's also a review on it. I had uh, someone from our skincare squad, our now defunct skincare squad, um, talk about it. So check that out. All right, you guys. So <laughs> I had to get out of there. The lady kept following me around. Now, daytime moisturizer, nighttime moisturizer. For some routines, your daytime moisturizer and your nighttime moisturizer can be the same exact product. So if your daytime moisturizer doesn't have sunscreen, you're gonna want to put a separate sunscreen on, right? We're not fighting about sunscreen usage during the day. You need it. I have lots of mad videos on it, so go check those out. Now, if you're applying a separate sunscreen on top of your moisturizer during the day, Typically you wanna wait a couple minutes, let that moisturizer settle before putting your sunscreen on because what can happen is sometimes the formula of the sunscreen and the formula of the moisturizer can like, you know, maybe they, they just need a little time to settle before you put one on top of the other. That way you can avoid pilling and you know, where the product look like it's clumping up, right? Now for some people, your daytime moisturizer may be lighter weight and, and formula and feel than your nighttime moisturizer. I know that's typically true for me. Um, especially in the warmer months. My daytime moisturizer is usually very lightweight, um, but very hydrating. Um, and then my nighttime moisturizer, since you know I'm not gonna be out and about and I'm not worried about my face being greasy, um, my nighttime moisturizer might be, you know, creamier, um, might be more nourishing than my daytime moisturizer. Now, a few more tips about moisturizer to bring it on home. Um, stop showering in those hot ass showers. <laughs> I see y'all out there. Turn the water temperature down when you're in the shower. That's a great way to kind of protect your skin. Um, also maybe look into getting a humidifier because a humidifier, especially in the colder, drier months, even in the summertime, if you're running air conditioning, you may want to also look into having a humidifier going in just so you're giving, you know, getting that nice hydration into your skin and you're not drying out your skin with like external factors. Now, like I said in my cleanser video, you guys have got some homework to do because you're not going to know if a moisturizer is going to work for you unless you try it. <laughs> now, of course, we're not going to be people where we just slap a whole bunch of products on our skin and then like hope for the best. Introduce new things one at a time. Moisturizer is something that's a non-negotiable in your routine. You're going to need to moisturize your skin. Um, but if you're trying something new, do a patch test. See how, <laughs> see how your skin reacts to that before you go slather the whole thing on your face if you're unsure. But hopefully this video helped you out. Um, it's meant to be something where, you know, I kind of give you the steps, but then you pull in your own information and your own knowledge of your skin, your own research, because, you know, everyone's skin is different and, you know, it's hard to cover a number of different, you know, circumstances in a video like this. Um, but, you know, you go in with that information and then this is meant to help you kind of narrow things down so that instead of looking at this many options for moisturizer, <laughs> you're looking at maybe this many and then you're narrowing it down by, you know, trial and error. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, follow me on social links will be in the description box and I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.